The stories of Bernard the Fox have been around for centuries and have been written down in Latin, French, Dutch, and German while also being translated into many other languages. Although there are quite a few narratives for this character, his personality is almost always the same. He's a crafty and selfish liar who always tries to get his way, but whether or not he succeeds in the end is dependent on the storyteller. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe adapted his poem Reineke Fuchs from the medieval stories and his work is perhaps the most famous version of the tale. It tells of the fox going on trial before the king lion and having to face the charges brought up by many other forest animals. This is used as a clever framing device where the animals can tell different stories about the fox's dishonest deeds. Goethe's book was adapted into a screenplay by Ladislas Sterevich, his daughter Irene, and a few others. The movie was made using stop-motion animation that was done completely by the father-daughter team. When they were finally finished, it came out to be 65 minutes long, making it one of the earliest feature-length animated films. The Fables of Renard are great works of fiction, and Van Goethe's poem is one of the best editions of the story. This is part of the reason that Sterevich's film worked so well, because it was based on strong source material. But it was also successful because it had a director who knew the right style to present the story in, and knew how to make films for modern audiences. For this reason, The Tale of the Fox should be seen as one of the most successful text-to-film adaptations, because of how the filmmaker made the work his own while still preserving the spirit and characteristics of the original. Animal stories have always been enjoyed due to the ease of attributing human qualities to the creatures. The fox has always been one of the more popular animal figures in literature, and perhaps some of his earliest stories were compiled in Aesop's fables dating back to approximately 600 BC. There were multiple fables where a fox was central to the story, but it always portrayed negative characteristics such as deviousness, laziness, or bitterness, as seen in The Fox and the Grapevine. There are many other pieces of medieval literature where a fox is of importance, such as Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, and Chaucer's The Nun's Priest Tale. The fox character eventually came to be famous for its sly and selfish yet intelligent personality. The poem Isengrim described Renard tricking and outsmarting a wolf, and contained many elements that inspired future versions of the story, eventually leading up to Johann Wolfgang van Goethe's Reineke Fuchs. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe was a German writer who lived during the 17 and 1800s. He was considered a man of genius due to his extensive contributions to poetry, science, art, and critical analysis. Although he may be more famous for his version of Faust, there's no denying that his account of the story of Renard is one of the most entertaining and well-written incarnations of the tale. Reinecke Fuchs was written in the style of old epic poems, using hexameter and descriptive language to set the right pace for the imaginative story. It was eventually the basis for several play and film adaptations, and even inspired a German-style brewery and restaurant in La Paz, Bolivia. Ladislaw Sterevich was born in Russia from a Polish family, and he would eventually move to France after World War I. This is part of the reason that he is known by many different spellings of his name. He started out as a filmmaker while working in a Lithuanian museum, he was making a series of short documentaries, and the final part was to be the fighting of two stag beetles. However, the beetles would always fall asleep when he shined the necessary bright lights onto them that he needed to capture the images. 
He realized it would be easier to animate a fight scene himself, using dead beetles by replacing their legs with wire that attached to the thorax with sealing wax. His film was a success, and inspired him to start working on more artistic animated films such as The Cameraman's Revenge, which was a silent comedy that told the story of infidelity among insects. Sterovich's style evolved, and he started to create more sophisticated puppets to work with. In 1934, he made what may be his most widely known film, The Mascot. It was ahead of its time in its use of rear screen projection, animation and live action interaction, and expressive emotions displayed through subtle puppetry. Yet he had already created his masterpiece of animation four years earlier. It simply had not been allowed a release due to many complications with the dubbing and distribution. The Tale of the Fox was Sterovich's longest film, and possibly his most inspired. It was only the sixth animated feature-length film, coming after works like The Adventures of Prince Ahmed and the partially animated The New Gulliver. Its theatrical run was much overshadowed by the American release of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, near the end of 1937. The Disney film had 569 people work on it, a million and a half dollar budget, and was in stunning full color. Compared to Sterovich's small production with only two chief animators, an independent budget, and black and white film stock, it's understandable why his film was not as popular as Snow White, although it clearly merited more attention than it received. Part of what made The Tale of the Fox so innovative was the animation technique. The director made large puppets to use in the film and had to rely on unconventional animation to make the movement look natural for the characters. Most stop motion animations are created by slowly moving the objects on screen by manipulating them directly between each photograph frame. But Sterovich wanted the movement to look more natural and similar to how things in motion appear when filmed. So he would shift the characters while the frame was being exposed, creating a slightly blurred image. This effect improved on the already brilliant quality of the animation, making the puppet's movements look more realistic or more exaggerated, depending on the effect that Sterovich desired for the scene. This technique of motion blur came to be known as Go Motion, after it was utilized extensively in Irving Kirshner's The Empire Strikes Back. And it was productively used in other special effects films such as E.T. and Coneheads, before the takeover of CGI. The film style and subject matter would come to influence Disney's Robin Hood, and more specifically, Wes Anderson's Fantastic Mr. Fox, which utilized stop motion and included some techniques used by Sterovich. The Tale of the Fox fits perfectly into the genre of adaptation, since it contains an obvious period setting, costumes and set pieces to match the environment, and opening credits that clearly identify it as based on a past work. And as is obviously necessary in all good text-to-film adaptations, changes must be made. Especially when adapting something as long as Rinnicky Fuchs, the filmmaker is forced to cut, condense, combine, or truncate narrative elements to accommodate the average running time of a feature film. However, the screenplay for The Tale of the Fox keeps many of the essential plot points and characters that make the story so timeless. It includes many of the memorable tricks that the fox plays on the king's subjects, such as convincing the wolf, or in the poem, it's the wolf's wife, to try ice fishing with his tail, only to get stuck in the lake. Tricking the bear into looking for honey in a log set up as a trap. Or persuading the cat to search for mice in a booby-trapped hole. These three incidents all cause the trapped animals to be attacked by humans, making the wolf part with his tail and the cat lose his eye. But there were also changes that were made to allow for a less violent story, while retaining the same ideas that were presented in the poem. A clear example would be when Renard gives the ram a bag that he is asked to take to the king. The poem lets us know that the bag contains a rabbit's severed head, while the film shows only a written note. However, the idea is still clearly presented in both that the king has been tricked by the protagonist. An even bigger change was made to the film's climax. In the written version, the final battle is between Isagrim the wolf and Renard, while in the movie it is a full-scale attack against his castle. Although the alteration may seem to modify the intention of the original text, it does not, it simply updates it. The poem had a bloody and graphic battle between the fox and wolf, but what was important was the fox won through trickery and lying. In the movie, he also defeats the attacking army through a series of tricks and traps that make for a more comical, cartoonish battle, and shift the focus from the personal, violent duel featured near the end of Gata's work. 
After the final battle in both versions, the king retracts the death sentence from Renard and grants him a high leadership position because of his clever wits. It's a bit surprising that Starovich chose to keep the original ending of the fox being rewarded for his trickery, especially since it has been popular in children's versions to have the fox punished for his offenses. It simply goes to show the appreciation the director had for the story in its original form. So although the climax is changed in the film, it gets the same point across as the poem, while reaching a larger and more modern audience. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe and Ladislaw Sterovich were equally wonderful storytellers. They both enjoyed old fables and fairy tales, and loved to retell stories through their own specific styles. Sterovich was a filmmaker like no other, and could be considered one of the greatest auteurs due to his creative influence over all his projects, and the way he could shape pre-existing material according to his distinctive creative sensibility. He was able to adapt an already wonderful work of literature into a creative stop-action film that took full advantage of animation's ability to create a world similar to magic realism. He made the film his own while retaining the spirit and essential elements of the original poem that he was adapting from. There have been other attempts at adapting the Fox's story to the screen, but none have been as creative, entertaining, and groundbreaking as Stedovich's film.